Hello, I'm Charles Alcock and this is AIN TV. Now today we're going to be talking about the state of the pre-owned aircraft market. This is absolutely crucial to how business aviation's fortunes are going to turn. And with Steve Azano, you're the founder of the jet business and we're going to talk a bit more about that in a moment. Um, but, you know, from my perspective, these still look like hard times. It still looks as if the market isn't anything like as healthy as it could be. And obviously the pace at which aircraft sales move is critical to, to how everything moves in a way. You're in the front lines of aircraft sales every day. How do things look to you? Are transaction paces picking up? Uh, uh, how is trading activity, would you say? I mean, it depends on really where you look at the market. On the upper end of the market, where the uh, super mid-size, the long range, and the ultra long range, that market is extremely tight. The supply is minimal. The demand is high. And you go down to the third and fourth tier, obviously it's a little less uh, demand than it is on the upper end. However, I think if you really cut a line uh, out of the 20 year old and older airplanes and remove them from the analysis, which you should because nobody's really buying Lear 23s and Jet Commanders today, you really find that really the market is not very uh, bad at all. Yes. I mean, if you look at the aircraft that are on the market today, if you take out that 20 year line, there's only about 1,500 airplanes for sale. And really, if you think about that, there's maybe another 10 or 20 percent that are on the market, but not really for sale for obvious reasons. Yeah. So then there's maybe 1,200 airplanes that are really for sale. Mm -hmm. The new manufacturers this year are going to deliver almost 700 airplanes. So with 700 new airplanes coming into market and 1,200 of them on the market for sale, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. The replacement time period is really not that bad. So it really becomes a aircraft model specific type of question. That's interesting. Okay, so the top end of the food chain, more healthy, and really, actually, if you strip away some of the, 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 the aircraft that aren't really in play, if you like, things better than they look. No question. Um, okay, so if you're not at the top end of the market, if you're trying to sell a light or a mid-sized jet, um, is it simply a case of you have to be more realistic over pricing to get things moving? And, and do you think that, that sellers are, are waking up to that fact? There's no question. Anything can be sold today for the right price. Yeah. Anything. And unfortunately, or fortunately, the way you want to look at it, is that the, the desperate seller doesn't exist anymore. The price is stabilized, and there are plenty of buyers out there. They still think that they can find the desperate seller, but they're not out there. So that's why you're seeing a slowdown in the transactions in that market, because the sellers are holding out for their prices, and they're not as desperate as they were at 2008 when the crisis occurred. So that's actually a positive thing. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at some of the overseas markets, you know, that's picking up a, a lot, especially if you look at Asia and China and, and uh, places like that. Uh, if you look at China, they won't even import an aircraft that's over 10 years old. Yeah. So that's bringing that market higher. And again, you're talking about the newer airplanes. That's, yeah. And that market is still pretty strong. So th there are interesting little micro markets around the world, and we'll get to that point in a minute. Um, I imagine that availability of financing is still pretty critical. And again, looking at it from the outside, you'd say, well, the banks aren't in great shape. We've just barely got over the financial crisis of 2008. What's the availability of funding like? I mean, are there fewer banks trying to help people with sales and are those banks getting pickier about who they will support? You know, I've been approached, uh, you know, in the last two, three months by, I think, four different banks that are asking me to send customers to them for financing. They're looking at probably around a 60, 65 percent loan to value. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, you can get 100 percent, 95 percent. Those days aren't there, of course. And there's a significant amount of banks that are trying to develop new relationships with high net worth people. So they are saying, we'll loan you the money, but we want you to put a little money on deposit. Not necessarily money, assets. It could be yeah, stocks, okay. could be property, whatever. So they want a wider relationship with those people. They companies. want a bigger relationship, but the funds mm -hmm. are available. And again, it's 65 percent loan to value, but the interest rate is really so low, it's hard to uh, yes. turn away from it. That's a good point. And at the very top end of the market, which you said was still healthy, I'm guessing that the people who are active as buyers there, they don't necessarily need financing. They may want to do it that way for various uh, fiscal reasons, whatever. Um, so it's not necessarily holding everything up in the marketplace, the, the, the fact that not so much funding is available. I have never had a client tell me that he has to wait for his financing to come through to buy an airplane. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Okay, and, and on the top end of the food chain. And to tell you the truth, most of these uh, large corporations, they have existing relationships with the banks. So they'll go and buy the airplane, and then later on they'll go and finance it. Uh, and it's so much easier to deal with the bank when you own the asset outright, and then you negotiate from a, power, a position of strength rather than saying, I need the money to buy the plane. And then there's, uh, it's a tougher negotiation uh, from the bank side. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's excellent. Well, let's talk a bit more about your very unique approach to the market. You're, you're taking the bull by the horns, particularly with 
reference to these emerging markets like the Middle East and Asia. Steve, tell us what you're doing. You've opened, I think, it's pretty much the first storefront sort of retail outlet for jets, but I'm not going to put words into your mouth. What are you doing? Well, it's, uh, it's a concept that I've been working on for the last four years in my head, and in the last year I've been trying to put it to, to a reality. It, that is actually the first street-level uh, showroom uh, luxury store in the aircraft sales business. So what we're trying to do is to, to really uh, to build the first brand in the pre-owned aircraft market. It doesn't exist. All the OEMs are obviously brands. When you look at any name, everybody knows the name around the world. But there's not a brand that exists in the pre-owned aircraft market. If you have the best deal, then you become the brand. But really, nobody goes to you because of your name. This concept is actually to put a storefront, uh, to have a, an airplane mock-up in the window uh, of, the, of the shop. I have a half a dozen sales and research people that are in cockpit design uh, desks. Mm -hmm. I have the technology that we've developed ourselves from scratch, the software apps we've written uh, from zero to bring a buyer from not knowing anything about the market, the kind of airplane to compare performance, operating costs, dimensions, and also to have a gigantic wall, a 26 uh, foot long wall by eight feet tall, so that I could project the full size of the interior of let's say a Gulfstream 550 to a Falcon 7X. But the to key a, point is it could be any airplane. You're not trying to sell any one aircraft. particular brand. The only aircraft I can't showcase full mm -hmm. size on that screen is a BBJ or an Airbus. But if that's the, the thing you want to look at, I have a full size mock-up sitting right in the space. So you can just sit inside the, co of the cabin itself. I'm with you. So if I'm a multimillionaire and I walk into your store, what sort of conversation are we going to have? We're going to sit down and talk about my needs, that sort of thing, I suppose? I mean, really, when you look at it, if you can, there are two different kinds of buyers today. And, and the kind of buyer that really has come into a sizable amount of wealth instantaneously is increasing. And those kind of people didn't exist 20 years ago. In the old days, people would buy a Beach Baron and then they'd move to a Citation and then they would move to a Hawker and then they'd move to a Gulfstream. Today, you know, somebody just made a half a billion dollars and they want to go right to the top of the food chain. But they don't know what they should buy. And this is where I hope my app and would bring these clients really from an educational standpoint to a place where they can learn everything in one place to compare every single manufactured airplane to every other one. Because today if you want to buy a, let's say a Gulfstream, it's fantastic. The salesman comes to your office, he brings his laptop and he gives you a great presentation on their product. But then if you want to compare it to another airplane, you have to get the other manufacturer to come and do it. Yes. So I'm, I'm willing to help the manufacturers and do this explanation between all of them myself and hopefully an unbiased type of situation. And hopefully in a pre-owned market, I will be able to obviously cap uh, capture more sales yeah, sure. doing it that way. And just to be clear, this first store that you're opening, that is in the city centre of London. Uh, yes. Why have you chosen that location? Why is that the starting point for this? You know, um, back, I, I worked for uh, the General Aviation Manufacturers Association 30 years ago, and I used to run the Statistical Forecasting Committee. And in those days, I remember pretty, uh, pretty vividly, about 32% of the aircraft that the manufacturers were selling were exported outside the United States. Mm -hmm. Today, 32% of the manufactured aircraft are actually just going to China. Mm -hmm. uh, so on top of that, if you look at Russia, you look at India, you look at all the other emerging countries, you have a, almost 60% outside of the U.S. being exported. So the market is really growing outside of the U.S. Uh, I don't want to make this a political uh, mm -hmm. interview mm -hmm. because that, that doesn't, it's not necessary, but we don't have a, a great atmosphere and environment for promoting mm -hmm. corporate aviation in America. And I think in London, if you talk about any corporation or any high net worth individual has ever flown on an airplane, chartered an airplane, owned an airplane, or even a fractional in the continents of Africa, Europe, the Middle East, any of the ex-Soviet countries, they all will come through London. It's the financial mm -hmm. capital of all those real continents. So I wanted to pick London as my first location. And then I'm going to be hopefully the, uh, within a year I'll be opening my second location which will be in Beijing because that's the next biggest market. Well actually it's, it's becoming the biggest market but it's not there yet but it's approaching yeah. quickly. And I suppose arguably these customers from what we could call the emerging markets for business aviation, they need your help more than the more mature customers who are more familiar with their choices. I There's no question, the Chinese market is really uh, virgins when it comes to knowing what is available in the aircraft market. So I think that the concept that I want to do is really going to be much more viable mm -hmm. in, in China. So I think the London market will be a, more of a pre-owned 
kind of a, a business model where in China I think it's going to be a lot of the manufacturers will enjoy the, the benefits that I'll be able to provide. That's really exciting, and After Steve, that yeah. I'll go back to America and open another one in America. And then they'll appreciate you, having, having uh, conquered the rest of the world, I'm sure. Appreciation <laughs> is not the end, of the, no, no. the end game. <laughs> I understand. Well, that's fascinating. So really, I suppose, in a nutshell, what we're talking about here is in fact, the pre-owned aircraft market is probably in a slightly better place than some people think it is. The top end is moving fairly well. If you price aircraft realistically at any end, you can sell them. And Steve Vassano isn't sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. He's getting out there. He's trying a new retail concept to bring aircraft closer to the end user. And we're going to watch that. We're going to see how that changed the market dynamic. Steve, I do thank you for your time. That's been very, very interesting. Thank you. And I wish you all the best with that. So for AINTV, thank you very much for watching. I'm Charles Alcock.